What's up, guys, and welcome back to In The Shop TV. If you guys are new to the channel, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon at the top. This way you can get notified when I upload new videos if you want to follow along with this entire 55 Chevy truck build from the frame up. So if you guys remember in the last video, we installed our cross member, we got it welded in along with our spring top hats here and here, and we kind of goofed. Somehow it got off by an eighth of an inch. So I spent about a half hour when I got in the shop this morning and I just kept measuring back and forth every single angle from each top hat to the frame to different rivets to just the different areas in the truck. And I've concluded that it's this side, the driver's side, that's actually a little too far back. I'm gonna try as best I can today to play with these slots and see if we can get these control arms and, and everything just lined up and straight. So let's get to it. So in the comments uh, in the last video, someone had mentioned that I had marked the wrong side or they thought that I had marked the wrong side of the T-slots to grind out. It turns out that I was on the op opposite side when I marked these and he's completely right. So uh, thanks whoever you were that mentioned that. You uh, saved me some heartache here. So I crossed this out. It's not this side. It's this side that we have to open up because the driver's side is what's further back. So we're going to open up both sides of these. This is the tool that I'm going to be using. It's just a little mini belt sander. I'm going with an 80 grit. I don't know if that's going to be enough because this is pretty thick stuff. It's 3 16 inch steel. I'm sure it'll work, but it might take a long time. But let's try it first because it is narrow enough that I can kind of get the tip of it in there. Um, a grinder will work, but it's just gonna, it's a big blade and it's kind of crude. I don't know. I want to try this first, and if it doesn't work, I guess we'll have to go to the grinder. But let's see how this does. All right, so... I got all the holes opened up. I quickly realized that that tool was not the right tool for the job. Um, it's more meant for like little delicate sheet metal work and stuff like that. This is 3 16ths of an inch steel, um, these T-slot holes. So it just, you know, it wasn't enough. It was just shred those belts really quick and I didn't really get anywhere. So what, here's what I ended up doing. I used a combination of these three tools. I used this cutter with a real thin blade on it and I would just kind of cut the slots down like that and it would leave a cup shaped indentation. And then I would take the air saw and then cut the two little parts out that were still kind of raised up that didn't cut all the way through with the wheel since you have a circular shape. Um, and then I would just take the die grinder and smooth everything out. The die grinder also came in really handy on the side that we didn't want to remove a lot of material on the back side. We just wanted to open it up big enough to fit those bolts and that's it. This side we ended up opening up about 3 16 of an inch. So um, it should give us plenty of what we need. Of course, I figured the when I open this up now, the T-bolts are kind of loose in there. So I'm gonna check it out and might just end up tacking in a very thin sheet of steel on this side of it. Okay, yeah, so I'm definitely gonna have to tack in a little piece of metal here because these bolts are not round, as you can see. They have this kind of shoulder on them and it's meant so that when you put these in and turn them, they can't turn. See this gap on this side right here? I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I get like a, Maybe a 16th or I think an eight's gonna to be too big, but it's just something, a little piece of sheet that we can weld in on this side. All right, so I've cut out my little filler piece for that T-slot and what we gotta do right now is gonna be a little bit tricky. That's our filler piece, it's really tiny. Um, that's probably like, I, I didn't measure it, but I believe it's I think 14, not even 14, 16 gauge steel or something, really thin. And we're gonna weld to three 16 cent steel. So um, the technique that I use for that is I set my welder to be my target metal, which is the thicker piece, the 316 steel, and I kind of turned down the heat just a tiny bit. You focus your MIG electrode or the welding electrode on the thicker piece of metal and kind of let the puddle of molten metal spill over onto the thinner stuff. If you hit this directly when it's set for 316, you're just going to disintegrate this in a heartbeat. So uh, it's a little bit tricky. We're going to go slow, um, see how it works, but. Hopefully, if I take my time and I've got the machine dialed in right, we'll be able to weld it in.
Okay, so it half went well. Um, on this end right here, I accomplished exactly what I was trying to do. And on this end, even when I was getting started, I kind of had some puddles fall over. There's gonna be some more grinding now, but um, let's get this smoothed out and see if we fit. See, it looks pretty good. And then, gee. All right, guys, we are welded in on both sides, ground down nice and smooth. Um, our T-bolts fit, and they do not turn to the right on both sides. Exactly what we're looking for. All right, so those are all welded up. I'm going to shoot a quick coat of paint on it to keep it from rusting, and then I think we're going to take out our control arms and start mocking them up and take some measurements. <laughs> All right guys, so measuring now, the control arms are in from the end of the bolt, let's square it up, to the frame, edge of the frame. We are at 21 and 5 eighths. All right, coming over to this side, squaring up on the edge of the bolt, just the same. We are 21 and I mean, a hair, yeah, it's five eighths, a hair under. I think I can live with that, guys. I'm gonna call that good. We're within a sixteenth of an inch, even on both sides. And again, we can fix that with some caster adjustment. Um, what they do is they kind of shim underneath here, and that will bring this forward, uh, pivot this whole thing like that, so it'll bring the wheel forward this way. I mean, these are micro, micro adjustments here, guys. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think we're gonna be okay. All right, guys, I went ahead and put the lower control arms on as well. Um, what I did was I measured from the front of the control arm here to the front of the frame, and the same thing on the other side. And those two came up exact dead on where I need them to be. So I'm really happy with that. These are totally within spec. I think we're you know, within a 16th of an inch, maybe even less, the front of the frame. And then we measured through a couple of the rivets here just to you know get a better reference, not just one spot. And I am feeling a lot, a lot better with how this turned out, guys. I mean, I think we are in good shape, um, ready to go. So, I am into the color, actually. I really like that cast color, so I think I'm gonna paint them that same exact color. Um, just buff them up a little bit, paint them, and I'm gonna clear coat them because there's gonna be, without spilling too many beans, there's gonna be uh, a lot of that kind of gunmetal looking stuff to come on this truck, so. I'm gonna roll with that look. Um, I was gonna powder coat them, but these bushings are in here for life. I mean, to take, I mean, I could get them out, but then, you know, he's got this captivated arm here. And anyway, with powder coating, the bushings, you know, these things get baked in an oven, so the bushing could melt on you. So that's not something I want to deal with. So we'll just mask everything up real good. These ball joints on the screw, fortunately for us, so that won't be a problem. So it's just really masking off the inner part of these bushings, which will be fine. And we'll get these painted up. But they are a super good fit. I'm happy with how everything lines up now. And we, I'm glad just to put that behind us. So I decided I'm gonna put these spindles on just to see how everything looks. Now it's lining up. All right. You can tell right off the bat that we gotta move these upper arms in a little bit just to get the spindle straight. All right, guys, what do you think? That's been kind of a process. So these spindles are plain cast, so I am gonna have to um, get them off. All this is gonna come off and we're gonna paint it and we have to get our chassis done. I was originally gonna strip this down and have it painted or paint it myself, but I think I'm gonna have it powder coated. Now, there's a place nearby that for the money that they're charging, I mean, just my time alone, it doesn't make sense. Um, I'm gonna bring them the whole chassis, strip everything off it and uh, let them powder coat it. But we're not quite there yet. Um, we got to start working on our rear end, get that figured out. Um, I really just want to get everything set in place where it's going to be. It's going to be kind of a while before we disassemble everything. Um, we got to get our engine in. We got to get the cab on to mock it up where the engine's going to go, weld our motor mounts in. Um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff. So not time for powder coat yet. Um, I do have to. I, I do want to get this painted at least relatively soon. 
because it is unprotected. This has some kind of spray paint on it from the factory, but this will rust up in no time. So I do have to get that painted up. Also, there's kind of no sense in putting the spring and coil over in yet because, you know, it's just sitting on back stands over here. It's not on its own suspension. It's not on its own weight. So um, it's just more I'm going to have to take apart later. So I'm just going to leave that as it is for right now. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for the day. I'm kind of shot. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do next, but there's going to be a lot more going on, obviously. So come on back and catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.